okay volumes forms consistency that's um, something that's always a tough thing for new animators and even seasoned animators sometimes when the day or the weeks wear on uh, to, to keep um, keep consistent. Um, so how do we do it? Uh, so one way of thinking about this is kind of like rotoscoping where you trace over a drawing. Uh, so in animation there is a term called shift and trace um, and it's a it's it's a it's a, a tool like a, a mental way of a, a, a way of thinking I guess you could say. Um, so how does the shift and trace tool or uh, mode work in Critter? Uh, there's no, there is no tool for shift and trace like in other applications. Um, so in this instance, what we can do is we can shift the idea from being a tool to a layer. Because um, remember that each, each one of these frames is like a traditional piece of paper. So we just need to be able to pick up that paper and move it to wherever we want. Um, so the way, if we were to look at this animation and what we have here, right, we have, um, we have this basic head looking uh looking off screen so in this direction and then um and then basically it's going to do a head turn but there's a couple of things missing in here so if we take a look at the next frame we can say oh okay the um the, the neck is missing here so it's kind of like oh so we have to draw that neck in so we can turn on our onion skin and we can see our, our onion skin is going to work for this right it's going to give us our neck so if we put our our neck in so we come to our rough drawing layer you know we can we can kind of we can we can put our neck in so if we scrub through it now we have our neck uh, well, you know, it's, it's not the best neck, so let's just let's just let's just make it a little bit thinner, like he's really stretching up. Okay, there we go. So we have we've drawn that part. That's easy enough. So we haven't really had to use shift and trace yet. But then we're jumping from this drawing to this drawing, and we need to put in we need to put in an in between drawing. So if we take a look at the two here, you can see wow, there's a really big difference, right? Um, so there's a couple of things you can you can do here with this idea of shifting drawings and shifting frames around and, and you know basically frame juggling um, so let's say for example um, yeah we want to put this frame in so there's a number of ways we can do it we can right click and we can say keyframe you know insert keyframe um, and then it's gonna it's gonna give us our keyframe um, or we can we can use our, our hotkeys right or we have these keyframes that are on top or we can just control click and drag in our blank keyframe um, that's it you don't even have to do that you can just start drawing and it's going to automatically add a new keyframe in there but what we want to do is we want to be able to keep our volumes consistent, mainly the cranium. So what we might do is we might just grab our first drawing and we can see here on our shift and trace, we're just going to drop that straight under our, our frame that we want to draw on. And then when we go to that layer, what we can do is we can move that drawing now to how we want to treat this head turn. Okay, and now let's, let's also just pretend for a moment here. We've got a lot of information here on the timeline. And, um, and this overshoot drawing, we just don't want to see it. Like, it's just, it's just confusing us. So we already covered pin frames. What we can do is we can just drag that frame straight down. So now when we look at our animation, we have our pin frame here, but now we can turn it off. Anytime we want to take that frame back, we can just drag and drop it back up there. Okay, so it's, um, it's just frame management, really. So when we come to the layer that we want to draw on, um, all we're trying to do is we're just trying to manage this consistency. So we're going to come back up to our drawing layer. And all we're going to try and do is we're just trying to match that, that particular volume. And I'm going to put a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, you know, like squash, um, stretch to his, to his head. And so we're going to have his eyes. This guy's eyes are going to be here. There's his nose and we can put his ear here. And if we want, there's going to be a bit of force in the ear. So I'll get our nose back. What we can do is we can just get it closer into the head. So now that we've done that, we've got our, our frame. Just turn on our pin frame, drag our, our frame back on what we want. So now when we scrub through, we have, we have our in-between frame. And now we, what we can do is we can just get rid of that frame. We, know, we no longer need it. So if we just space these out, there we go. And if we play it back, now we've got our, our in between. And there's that there's that little stretch, right? So basically that's just you know how those how these particular layers work. When you're doing your animation, you can just control click, drag them down to a shift and trace layer, or control click and drag them down to your, your pin frame layer, turn it off, draw what you need. Um, and and basically you know get on with your day and you can keep things you know just moving nice and consistently and that's it
yeah, that's shift and trace in uh, in Critter. Okay, thanks guys.